we're going to start on our backs. And so I want you to lay down on your backs and make sure one of your blocks is somewhere nearby. So people at home probably turn around and lay down with your head facing me. And then once you find yourself on your back, I want you to bend both of your knees. Plant your feet on the floor and then walk your feet outside of your hips and then let your knees knock in. From here, you'll wrap your arms around your torso and just let your elbows rest on top of each other. And then you'll just take a few breaths. And the arms, or rather the hands themselves, can just be super easy. If your hands reach underneath your shoulders, great. If they don't, great. It doesn't matter. Just let your elbows be super heavy. And then you'll take about five slow, deep breaths here. And so what we're first working on is the psoas, or rather sciatica can be caused, it turns out, by a couple of different things. One of the things that can cause sciatic pain is what's called a bulged disc, um, which basically means that your disc, instead of pushing into a natural state of alignment in the front and the back of your spine, is typically going too far back. And so that can create pain that pinches a nerve and runs all the way down, possibly to your feet. The second major cause that can happen to cause sciatic pain happens actually in the lower back just by tight muscles or weak muscles. And then the third thing that can cause sciatic pain, which most of us are probably familiar with, is something that's also called piriformis syndrome. So the piriformis, which is a pear-shaped muscle in your hip that connects the uh, sacrum to the greater trochanter can become tight and it presses on your sciatic nerve and then that causes pain. Um, so take one or two more breath cycles here. Notice which arm is on top. And then on your next inhalation, you'll inhale and open the arms and exhale, switch arms if it's on top. Cool. And so I'll continue talking to you and you continue to breathe. So in any case, the sciatic nerve apparently is as wide as one of your fingers. And so when it gets pinched, it can cause a lot of pain. For some people, it's just like isolated to the low back. Some people, it's like their buttocks down through their legs. Some people experience it all the way down towards their feet. And so we're going to do a few things today that can help rebalance things um, whenever you might start to experience some sciatic pain. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is because there are multiple causes, there can be multiple things that can help as well as multiple things that can potentially make it worse. The only one that will know is you and your doctor. So if you do experience this consistently, you might want to talk to your doctor about what the causes might be, and then you'll have a better idea of how to proceed. With that, that disclaimer out of the way, we're going to go ahead and start. So take another two or three breath cycles here. This was double duty. What I was intending to do is intending to inform you about what we're doing, as well as give a chance for the piriformis to lightly stretch while you're here. And so on your next in-breath, I want you to gently open the arms. And then you'll walk your feet so they're hip distance apart. And then grab your block. Now, for today, walk your feet all the way to touch. And you're going to take your block, your widest angle, and you're going to put it in between your thighs just above your knees. Well, I guess since you're laying down, it might seem below your knees if you're looking down at your knees, but it's just beneath your knees. Fantastic. Other way, Roberta, closer to your pelvis. Between knees and hips. Between knees and hips. Yep. Fantastic. And you want to make sure your whole foot stays on the floor. And the first thing that you're going to do is see if you can relax your arms somewhere. Keep all 10 toes pressed onto the floor, and you're going to take a big breath in, and as you exhale, squeeze that block for dear life. Great. The so next time you inhale, you'll continue to squeeze that block, hold that pressure, and then your next exhale, you'll squeeze that block harder. Yeah. And then you'll take another breath in, holding that tension there, and then exhale, squeeze it a little harder. And our last time, you'll inhale here, holding that pressure. And then exhale, squeeze the block a little further. 
fantastic. Next, in-breath, gently release the tension, release the block, walk your feet back to hip distance apart, and just take a moment to notice what you notice. So sometimes if we can release some of the tension on the outer hips, that will also release some of the tension pressing against piriformis and pressing against sciatic nerve. And so what we're trying to do now is tone your adductors, your inner thighs, and just to see if that releases any tension around your pelvis. Okay, so we're gonna do this three more times. So walk your feet back together, put the block in between your thighs. So it's just above your knees. And you're gonna do a total of four sets. So you take your first breath in. As you exhale, you squeeze that block for dear life. With every inhalation, you hold that pressure. And then you exhale and squeeze it again. And the best way to work with this is you're just trying to see if you can breathe all the way down to your pelvic floor, so all the way to the base of the spine, and you squeeze the block. And as we take these last two breath cycles here, I want you to notice if your right leg is working faster than your left or your left is working faster than your right and see if you can even that out. I notice that for me, my right leg is more dominant, so it's a little bit more active. But when I can get the left leg to meet it, then I feel equal expansion across my pelvis or my sacrum in the back. Awesome. Go ahead and gently release that. That should have been four breaths. Walk the feet to hip distance apart and just relax and breathe into the pelvis, noticing if you feel any openness specifically around the pubic bone in the front. Nice work. Okay. Let's go ahead and walk the feet back to center. Place the block back between your inner thighs. Barbara, can you turn your block so it's the widest width it could go? No. Nope. There you go. Awesome. And then you're going to do this again, four breaths. Four breaths. And then Barbara, check in. Is your right leg and your left leg equally pressing into that block? Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. And you'll notice when you do press evenly into the block with both legs, your sacrum remains really rooted on the floor. You're doing good, Steve. Yeah, then we've got one more breath cycle here. At the end of this next breath cycle, you'll gently release. You'll take the block out of your thighs. You'll walk your feet hip distance apart. And this time I want you to just take a few little pelvic rocks. So just a little forward and back, keeping your butt on the floor, but seeing if you can imprint the low belly into the spine, spine into the floor, and then arch the back. So you could theoretically run your hand under your spine. Another way to think of that is like having, if I put a marble in the middle of the space between your belly button and your pubic bone, you rock the marble towards your face, and then you rock the marble away from you. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and come to stillness, come to center, and we'll do our very last step. So walk your feet back together, legs together. Place that block between your inner thighs on its widest orientation. And then you take four breath cycles on your own. And you're just really pressing into the block. Inhale, you hold that tension. And your next exhale, you squeeze it a little bit harder. And so whenever those of you that do experience sciatic pain are experiencing sciatic pain, this is the exercise you want to come to in order to alleviate some of the pain. What you're doing is essentially strengthening the muscles on the inside that aren't doing their part, that are causing the outer hips and the backs of the legs to experience more um, unnecessary strain than they need to. Okay, we'll pretend that that was four breaths because I'm sorry, Roberta, but I was not counting. Is this four? Okay, so go ahead and release that block. Go ahead and walk your feet back to hip distance apart. And then I just want you to notice how this feels to breathe here. Take those pelvic mutations once again and see if you can find more of your sacrum on the floor, more of both sit bones on the floor in an equidistant manner. Great. And then we're going to go ahead and come to a still neutral spot. If that block is still on your belly, go ahead and remove it off to the side. 
And then you're gonna roll over to one of your sides and you're gonna come up to sit. Okay, Erica, I'll give you my strap in a moment. We're gonna unroll our strap all the way. This is something we haven't done in a while, but it helps with foot stuff, so you might enjoy this. So come all the way up to sit. You are gonna bring the front of your strap across the front of your, let's all pick our left foot just for kicks and giggles, like you're wearing an espadrille. So you're gonna go around behind the back of your foot and cross the strap. And you're gonna lift your left foot and the strap that's on the left side is gonna come around your big toe. And then the strap that's on the right side is gonna come around your pinky toe. So ideally, you should have something that looks like that at the bottom of your foot. Cool, once you've got that configuration, you're gonna lie down. I don't think that's, yeah. I don't think that's long enough. Cool. And so when you lie down, first things first, just go ahead and bend your knee into your chest. And as best as you can, you're going to still hold on to the weird configuration of your strap and your foot. So this one is going to come under. No. Oh, just hold this one. Uh, well, right now, no. I'm just getting Erica sorted and then we'll go forward. Okay. From here, let's just bend our knee. Release the tension on the strap and hold on to the front of your shin bone. And I want you to just take a big breath in here and just straighten your arms and kick your knee away from you. And then exhale, hug the knee into your chest. And you'll just do four of those. So the knee stays bent, your hands are on the fronts of the shin, and you're just finding a little bit of compression of drawing the leg, the thigh towards you, and then the thigh bone away from you. Yeah. And you just feel how that feels, a little compression into the hip socket. So sometimes, when we have sciatic tangling, uh, hip flexion, which is what you're doing right now and what you're testing right now, can be a little bit too much for us. So you're just testing that to see how that feels for you. The next time the knee comes in, go ahead and keep that there. Extend your right leg long against the floor in opposition and just see how that's feeling for you. So you've got your left knee into your chest, your right leg is super straight and strong beneath you, seeing if you can flex through that right foot and just feel how that feels. If you're not feeling any pain, you're good. We will be able to continue and you'll just continue to breathe. Fantastic. You've got one more breath cycle here. On your next exhalation, bend your right knee and plant your right foot back on the floor. Fantastic. Now from here, grab your strap again if you don't have it and reach your left leg up towards the sky. Now I want you to see if you can arch your back a little bit away from the floor, just like we did before. So your pubic bone is rolling forward and it feels like your low back is away from the floor where someone could run their hand underneath. Yeah. Keep both sit bones on and hold on to the strap one in each hand. Now what you'll notice is that if you pull with your left hand, you'll feel one stretch happening. If you pull with your right hand, you'll feel a different stretch happening. Oh yeah, oh boy. So you're gonna breathe there and you're gonna test that out for you. And we're gonna be here for a while. So you're gonna breathe, you're gonna breathe, you're gonna breathe. I feel better. And you're just gonna notice because, may I help? Because you have the strap across your foot, you can definitely articulate how you're lifting up through that heel and pulling down with one end or the other and how that gets like perhaps your inner calf or your outer calf. Can I help? Let's take this one and go there and this one and go there. I need your toes more and then that gives you more of the calf. Yes. yes, it does. Wow. And then you just pause and you breathe. And then I want you to check in and see how that right leg, if you're happy as a clam right here, you might stay here with the right leg bent or you might extend your right leg long against the floor. And if you take that option, I want you to check in once again on your pelvis. Now, we wanna draw that left hip away from our left shoulder as much as we can. And then we wanna see if we can root down into our right thigh, our right hip. And then are you breathing? No, yeah, that's okay. We can allow ourselves to breathe as we keep reaching up through our heels. And some of you are going to stay here. You're going to be like, yeah, Jessica, this is where I'm hanging out. This is fantastic. I'm not going any further. Some of you will bring both ends of that strap into your left hand. Uh -huh. 
this is going to be fun. You might want to plant your right hand on your thigh so you can have this one long straight line. And then I want you to see if you can turn your left toes to the left from the top of your left hip. So external rotation. Hello. Uh, wow, my dance terminology is going out. I can't remember what this is called anymore. Developeo. We'll call it for that for now. And so you'll just breathe here. If you need to bend the right knee, go ahead and bend the right knee because we're focusing mostly on the left leg, making sure we're stretching that left hamstring. Fantastic. Now from here, you're going to open your left leg to the left without letting your right hip move. And you're externally rotating a lot through that left leg. And because you have this strap here, you might notice that if you pull a little bit more on one toe or the other toe, it impacts what's happening on the outside edge of your leg. And then are we breathing? We're not. <laughs> no. So we want to come back to that breath and see if we're gripping around our mouths. And then on our next in breath, let's come back up through center. You'll draw both ends of the strap into your right hand. Now today, actually, we might do something a little bit different. Let's have the strap in the right hand and the left hand. And you're gonna cross your left leg a few inches over to the right without letting your left hip, yeah, that's more intense, isn't it? Yes, it is. And you're not letting the left hip come off the floor. And because you're holding onto the strap, one in each hand, you can play with which part of the strap you're pulling against and which part of the foot and which part of the calf, and then are you breathing? Are you breathing? Are you breathing? So this is one of the other muscles that we're trying to open up when we're having sciatic pain. Oh, sorry. Uh, the whole outer edge of the hip. So most of us will probably feel this in our calf. Some of us will feel it down the IT band, so the outer edge of the leg. Some of us will feel this in the hamstring. Inhale, coming up. And some of you will feel all the way up to the hip. On your next exhale, bend the knee, hug the knee into your chest, release your espadrille strap. And then you just take a moment to maybe move that hip around, maybe just be still, but you're gonna release that left foot at some point. So the left foot comes to the floor, bend the right foot, and just notice if you notice anything different between the right and the left hips. How does it feel in the front of the hip? How does it feel in the back of the hip? How are you breathing across that whole pelvic low back region? Yeah, and then, this is going to be awkward, but I want you to roll to the side that you ordinarily do not roll to. Whatever side you do not roll to, just roll to a side. And then you're going to come up to sit, and then we're going to try it on the other side. So, actually, can I try your bootstrap if I'm not actually doing this so I don't have to have a full length? Okay, so we're going to try it on the other side. So you're going to bring the strap across the middle of your right foot. And I probably should have said this the first time. You want to make sure you've got equal ends on both straps. And then it's going to go around and behind. The strap that's on the left side is going to go around the pinky toe. The strap that's on the right side well, is going to go around the big toe. And then you'll have something that looks like that. And once you've got that whole configuration going on, you're going to lie down. And when we first lie down, we're going to bend our knee into our chest. We're going to bend our left leg. And you're going to hold on to the top of your right shin. Yeah. Cool. And then you just take those little pulses. So you inhale and send the thigh bone away from your belly. And you exhale and hug it in. And you're just feeling that compression, that flexion in the front of your hip. Seeing how your back is doing with that. So Steve, the knee stays bent and you're just literally pulling, bring your hands to the top of your right shin. Yep, and then you pull the knee into your chest and then you kick it away. So then the leg never straightens. It's just a little bit of compression in and out. There we go. Awesome. Yep, and then the next time that knee comes in, if that feels good for you, you might choose to stay here. You might Extend your left leg long on the floor beneath you. And you'll just take a few breath cycles here, really finding length on your left side body. Find the activation through your left leg as you pull your right knee into your chest. And you just pause and you breathe. Got one more breath cycle here, and you're just noticing what you notice. Taking time to allow the body to tell you what it needs so it can open up and start the help and healing process. And on your next exhale, bend that 
left knee, plant the foot on the floor. And then you'll bring your hand to the strap and straighten your leg, your right leg up into the ceiling. May I have this? What happened here? Okay, there we go. And then from here, you'll just pause and you'll notice that with the strap around the ball of the foot and the, the big toe mound specifically, pinky toe specifically, and you having one end of the strap into each hand, you can keep lifting up through that right heel and then lightly pull down with your left hand or your right hand and just notice what that does on the outside of the leg specifically and then the calf and your hamstring and then you notice if you're breathing if our faces are tense and some of you will stay here with that left leg bent some of you will extend your left leg long on the floor beneath you and if that left leg is long, really root down through the left heel. Yeah. And then draw the outer right hip away from your right shoulder and root down into your left hip. Oh, you have more mobility on this side. Can we draw the hip a bit? Yeah. I'm going to root down just. I feel okay. And then I want you to see if you can imagine that you're arching your low back a little bit. Ah. You can just pause and you breathe. Does the pressure feel okay, or do you want more of this? Okay. Then you just pause and you breathe. Got one more breath cycle here. Fantastic. Now, some of you will bend your left leg and put the left foot on the floor. From here, we'll draw both ends of the strap into our right hand. And then we will take our left hand maybe to the top of our left thigh, or if the knee is bent, you open the left arm out to the left. Then externally rotate. I don't know how you're going to do that here, but external. Okay. <laughs> externally rotate the right leg. So your right heel comes into your mid thigh. Your toes are pointing up towards your right armpit or maybe towards the floor. And you let it open without allowing the left hip to open. So come up a little bit more this way to the end. And we're going to imagine we're doing just a demi rond de jambe. Ah, yep. And then see if you can pull your belly in and turn your rib cage to the left. Yeah, and that counterbalances pelvis. And then you just pause and you breathe, and you're really reaching out through your right heel. You're noticing if you're gripping into that strap for dear life, the right hand. See if the belly can turn towards the left. Yeah. And then on your next in breath, you'll come back up through center. You'll bring both, well, actually, let's just keep both hands holding onto the strap for this one for this time. And then cross the right leg a few inches to the left. <laughs> I love that face, Roberta. She's like, I already know this is not going to be fun. I'm going to do this. You're going to cross the leg a few inches. And then again, because you can hold onto the strap, one in each hand, notice what happens if you pull more on the right versus the left. As you keep reaching out through your right heel, are you breathing? Are we breathing? Yeah. Last breath cycle here. Keep your right hip as rooted to the floor as you can. A little bit more weight in that hip, Barbara. Yep. On your next in breath, come back up through center. As you exhale, bend the knee, release the strap. Yep. And then you might move around a little bit. You might not. And then when you're ready, you'll plant the right foot on the floor and the left foot right next to it. And just notice what that feels like now. How do the fronts of both hips feel? How do the backs of both hips feel? What do you feel in the back of your sacrum? Okay. And then go ahead, walk your feet together one more time. Grab one of your blocks, put it on its widest setting, and just, I want to put you one right there, Roberta. And we're going to just take this one more time. So widest setting, exhale, squeeze the block, crush it, candy crush, if that's a thing with your thighs, or maybe it's Jane Fonda. And then inhale and keep holding that. And then exhale, squeeze it again, making sure you're pressing evenly with both sides. And then two more on your own. Barbara, is it possible for your feet to touch each other? Yeah, there you go. 
there you go. This is actually something my um, massage therapist used to do to me all the time when my back would go out. He would have me crush something and then it just out. And our last set. And then once you've done your four sets, you'll remove your block. You'll bring your feet back to hip distance apart. And you'll just take a few moments to breathe and you'll see how that feels. And then gently you'll roll over to one side. Yep. And you'll come up to hands and knees. And you'll take a downward facing dog. And you'll just notice how that feels. And in this downward facing dog, we'll imagine that you still have a block between your inner upper thighs. So send your inner thighs back. Yep. Brush your hands down and forward. And just take a moment to pause and breathe here. And then for today, let's all try this. Let's go ahead and bend our knees quite a bit. I want you to send your butt up to the sky as much as you can. And then keeping your butt there, draw your front ribs in, draw your armpits away, and then see if you can reach your heels back and then maybe towards the floor, seeing if we can find as much length for our spine as possible. Nice job. Okay, then go ahead and bend your knees. Plant your knees on the mat and take a few cats and cows. And just notice what that feels like. So an inhale to find your cow shape and exhale to find your cat shape. And you just experience the breath moving through the body now. Awesome. awesome. All right. So that was stuff to help with the hips if we were experiencing hip stuff in our sciatic. Now we're going to work on stuff that might help with it if you're having low back issues. So go ahead and come to a neutral spot and start to walk yourself forward onto your belly. Just lay down on your abdomen, all the way down. And the first thing that we'll do is I want you to just find heads up, seven up. So cross your forearms, let your forehead rest on the tops of your forearms. And then walk your big toes to touch and let your heels open out. And I want you to just breathe for a few breath cycles here again, into the pelvis and into the low back. Our spine, we've heard this said a lot of times, and I think it's a beautiful imagery. Basically, our spine is intended to have arches because that is the most efficient way for weight to be distributed. And so we're just allowing ourselves in this moment to breathe into the belly. And you'll notice that if you really breathe into the belly and the belly pushes into the floor, you'll feel space start to come into your low back. And you'll notice that if you continue to push into the belly, uh, you might also find space come into the backs of the shoulder blades and then the wide ribs. And so you're allowing your body to breathe three-dimensionally and we're hoping that we can remember that as we go into this next series of shapes. So you'll take two more breath cycles here. And just notice the sense of spaciousness that's coming. Great. At the end of your next exhale, go ahead and release your hands and bring your hands alongside your waist. Actually, I should say alongside your hips. So hands are reaching alongside your legs, long, strong, superman, superwoman arms. And then go ahead and separate your feet hip distance apart. From here, let's go ahead and alter our palms to face the floor. Draw our shoulders up towards our ears and our shoulder blades onto our back bodies. Now from there, press your pubic bone down and as you inhale, lift your head and lift your right leg. Exhale, lower your spine back down, leg back down. Inhale, lift your head, chest, and left leg. Yep, exhale, lower all the way back down. You've got 10 sets of these. So inhale and lift, or I guess I should say five sets, 10. And then inhale, other side. And stay on the ground, yep. We're just trying to strengthen lower back first, keeping legs straight. And you'll notice that as you're doing this, your pubic bone can still press down into the floor as you lift. And notice if the opposite hip lifts off the floor or if you can keep it weighted down onto the floor. Yeah. So most of the time we'll lower or we'll shift our weight to one side. So see if you can keep both hips rooted as you lift up. 
and both hips rooted as you lower down. Well, that looks nice, Roberta. I think this should be eight. Oh, good. So I was actually somewhat counting. It happens very rarely. Yep. And then this should be nine. Nice control, Julie. And this will be 10. Okay. And then you'll just go ahead and relax. And you'll just breathe. And let's just take a few breaths. So maybe you come back to the heads up, seven up style with your hands. Maybe you bring a cheek to the mat or an ear to the mat, but you just pause and you breathe and you notice what this feels like. So the bulging disc thing, that exercise, um, a lot of the back bends we're going to do today help to let the discs go back to their normal orientation so that there's equal pressure on the front and the back. And so that there's not compression on the nerve that goes in between. All right, let's go ahead and come back. Let's bring our arms alongside our hips once again. This time, let our palms face towards our thighs. Press the tops of your toenails down. Press your pubic bone down. And see if you can straighten your legs as much as you can. Then from there, draw your shoulders up towards your ears, your shoulder blades together on your back. Scoop your navel, your belly button towards your sternum and see if you can lift your head, neck, and chest up and away from the floor. Fantastic. Energize the arms and see if you can float your hands a few inches away from the floor. Fantastic. Reach so far back through your toes that you can inhale, lift your left leg up off the floor. <laughs> Keep that. Then reach so far through your right foot that you can lift your right leg up and off the floor. Fantastic. Keep that. Reach so far back through your left leg that you can lower your left leg back to the floor. Fantastic. Keep that. Reach so far back back through your right leg that you can lower it to the floor. Great, we're gonna keep doing that. So inhale, reach back through the left leg, lift it. Inhale, reach back through the right leg, lift it. Inhale, reach back through the left leg, lower it. Inhale, reach back through the right leg, lower it. Fantastic, one more set. Inhale, left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg. Fantastic, inhale, left leg last time. Right leg, we're gonna hold it for three. Press your pubic bone down, lift your hands a little higher. Draw your shoulder blades together for two. Lift your, the crown of your head for one. Exhale, lower all the way down. Fantastic. Plant your hands alongside your lowest ribs. Curl your toes under hands and knees or plank and then downward facing dog. And you just pause and you breathe and you pause and you breathe and you notice what you notice. How does that feel? How does that feel? Nice work. All right. On your next in breath, let's go ahead and lower your knees, bend your knees, lower your knees. And if you have a blanket, grab your blanket, put your blanket under your shin bones. Okay. Well, we're going to take a little toe squat before we do this next thing. This next thing I don't particularly enjoy. So might as well do something I sort of enjoy before we do that. Okay, so make sure you've got both sets of toes under and then we're gonna reach both arms forward like zombies. Left arm crosses on top. You might give yourself a hug. You might double wrap the arms. You choose what works best for you, but you're gonna just pause and breathe here and you can inhale, lift the elbows and exhale and lower the elbows. Seeing how that feels in your upper back. We've got about five breaths with this arm on top. So if you're in movement, great. That's five sets. If you're in stillness, great. That's five breaths. And you're just noticing how that feels. And this one should be our fifth one. And then we'll go ahead and inhale, unwind, and switch whichever arm is on top. So theoretically, right arm is on top. Maybe you give yourself a hug. Maybe you double wrap the arms. And you've got five breath cycles here, maybe pulsing up and down, maybe not. And if at any point in time this becomes too much for your feet, you can stand up on top of your shins and release the feet and sit back down, or none of the above. But you choose what works best for you. Okay. I want to say we have one more. Okay. And then you'll gently release that. Come forward, hands and knees, pitter patter the tops of your feet, having a happy little temper tantrum. 
And then if you'd like, you'll shift back and lift one end or both knees up and away from the floor to find a counter stretch uh, across the fronts of your shins. So we just pause and we breathe. Okay. You guys can stay there for a little bit. Um, so this next thing that we're going to do is a combination. So if you are experiencing sciatic pain currently, be mindful with this. The first part we're going to do is we'll stretch the muscle that often is tight in the piriformis and then also strengthen it. The stretch comes when you cross the elbow. So here's your sneaky core work as well, Erica. The strengthening comes when you lift the leg back on a 45 degree angle. So it's not back behind us. We're not all the way out here. We're somewhere in between. You're going to externally rotate the leg, hold the hip. And we're going to do this about 10 times. So exhale to cross and inhale to open and squeeze. Okay. So when you're ready, let's go ahead and inhale and come forward to hands and knees. We'll all start with our left leg. So we're all on the same side. On your next exhale, cross your left knee to your right upper arm or elbow. And then inhale, send it back on that 45 degree angle, squeeze the hip. Fantastic. And go on your own pace, following your own breath. Exhale to cross, inhale to open. Yep. And we want to see how far we can try to touch yeah, our leg. It's not going to get there, but it's just the attempt. And then you're also noticing how the weight is in your hands, because this literally is our core work. Are you pressing all the way into your right leg, right hand rather, or can you keep it equally balanced so your core has to work in order to draw it up? Yeah. I mean, keep trying to draw that knee as close. Core work. That part is not so sneaky. Not at all. And so Julie, really cross that left knee to your right elbow. A little, haha, yep, super cross. There you go. Nice, Robin. After you've done 10, you're going to release that. You're going to take a few breaths in center hands and knees. If you want to do some cats and cows, great. If you want to stay there in neutral, great. If you want to look at me and cringe, that's fine too. But you just pause and you breathe. You pause and you breathe. And then we're going to try all that on the other side. So when you're ready to try round two, Go ahead and come back, take a big breath in, and then you'll exhale, cross your right knee towards your left elbow armpit thing, and then inhale, send it back on that 45 degree angle. So it's on the same line. Nice, Julie. Yep. Yep, nice, Barbara. Nice, Robin. Good, Steve. Steve, can you draw it a little higher up towards your left hand arm hit thing? So really cross the body. There we go. So get your obliques and stretching that outer hip, strengthening that outer hip. And I'm making you do a lot of stabilization because this is, I don't know, probably the worst core work I've come across so far. I'd rather do that forearm plank thing. I don't know why, but I really would. Okay, and then after you've done 10, you come to neutral. You sit and you rest. We're all going to make our way eventually back to downward facing dog. So if you want to go out there and hang out, you by all means do that. All right. We'll eventually make our way back to down dog. And when we find ourselves in down dog this time, let's all bend our knees. Bend your pubic bone up and back. Fantastic. Let's take a slight detour. Everyone lower your knees down. Lower your knees down. Grab a block. We're just going to put the block there for. Put the block between your inner upper thighs, then go back to downward facing dog. And you'll start with your knees bent in downward facing dog. And I want you to imagine that you're a Peds dispenser. So really bend the knees and then send that block back. Happy candy back. Uh -huh. There we go. And then you'll notice that that allows you to arch your low back. Ha -ha, and then reach your heart towards your hands, too. Yep. And you just pause and you breathe. And you notice how that feels. That's good. Okay. And then as you're ready, you're going to bend your knees. 
And you are going to either walk your feet towards your hands or walk your hands towards your feet, but you choose whichever one you wish to do. And then once you're at the, your feet standing in Uttanasana, take that block and slide it down between your shin bones on its second setting so it's a little bit wider. There we go. And then from there, make sure your feet are still parallel towards each other. Slide your hands up your shins, reach your heart and sternum forward. Fantastic. And then I want you to play with where your weight is on your feet. Are you too far forward? Are you too far back? Find that central spot. Then bring your fingertips to the tops of your shins and see if you can reach your heart a little further forward as you straighten your arms. And then you're going to bend your knees. And then you're going to reach your arms forward. Cool. So this is the awkward thing we're going to do today. We're going to keep our butt essentially in chair. Your hands are going to go forward. You're going to exhale. You're going to straighten your arms, doing a half a swim back and heart comes forward. And then you're going to bend your knees and sit your butt back to that chair pose. And we've got about five of these. And so one of the things that we want to be mindful of when we're having sciatic pain is having too much flexion in the hips. So that's definitely something we already talked about because it has to do with the bulging discs. And so what we're doing here is we're training our back muscles here to be strong so that when we go into our forward fold, there we go. Uh, so flexion is basically when, how do I explain this? The problem with sciatica in terms of too much flexion is because the bulging disc means that the disc, I'll wait till you guys are done to talk about this. Yep, okay. <laughs> okay, five more. Keep bending your knees, yep. And you might notice that each time as you do this, so we'll pick this as our last two, you can get your butt a little lower in that chair pose when you sit. So we're trying to strengthen the back and you can keep your head up for as you do that. So it goes down, but it's still in alignment with the spine. And this is our last one. So we'll bend our knees, we'll reach our hands forward. Utkatasana, fantastic. And you might just stay here, palms reaching forward or up, or you might reach your arms alongside your ears. And you're going to just pause and you're going to breathe and you're going to pause and you breathe for three. You're going to squeeze your block for two. You're going to root down through your feet for one. Next, in breath, reach up, stand up, look up. And notice how you have to adjust through the spine. There's lots of little micro movements going down through the spine. And once you feel like your spine is in alignment, you can open the arms, soften the gaze, and close the eyes. And just take a few breaths there. Take a few breaths. And to notice how the weight is on your feet. Heart is still open and lifted. Yeah. Okay. And then go ahead and open your eyes. Move your block. I'll talk about the spine thing in a minute. Get your blanket. And you're going to fold your blanket like so. And then you're going to sit on your blanket. Oh. So the issue with the spine and the bulging disc is we know that we have our discs that go between our vertebra, right? And the discs are like the gelatinous fluid that protects things from being too compressed. A lot of times with the bulging disc, the disc has moved. So it's not equally set between the two discs. And a lot of times what happens is it's moved back behind us. Well, away from, I guess, the midline of our body. So away from your belly button. And so because it's already moved back, you don't want to do too much flexion because you keep pushing it further back, which is why we do back bends because we want to try to push it back forward so it can come back to neutral. Does that make sense? Yes. 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 But flexion in your hips can... Good question. Flexion in your hips impacts it because a lot of us, if I'm flat like this and my spine is neutral, we don't just flex with the hips like this. We don't cut, just bring it like that. Most of us round through the low back in order to make that happen. So the flexion in the hips is impacting the flexion in the spine. Does that make sense? Okay. Arch your back. I'm taking the spinal lumbar flexion out. Yeah. Cool. Where the hell are we going? Oh, okay. No, you're good. Um, can I have a strap? Mm, you might want to keep that one. 
Cool. So we're going to sit, sorry, people at home, did that make sense to you? I got a heads up from Robin. Barbara, thumbs up. Julie, you okay? Okay. Okay. Steve, you okay? Okay. All right. So we're going to sit on our blanket. And most of us, if you need one level, great. If you need to fold it up a little higher, great. We want to make sure that we're keeping the flexion out of our lumbar spine and keeping it in our hips. So maybe that was a good, it was a good because it actually goes in the middle. Okay, so we want to make sure that we're keeping the flexion out of our lumbar spine. And you're going to cross your right leg so that it crosses your midline just a little bit. And then you're going to cross your left leg over. Take your left knee, stack it on top of your right. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, now with your strap, we're going to try to lasso our foot. And we want to make sure it's around the ball of our foot. This is a good color though for the camera. It's very clear. Okay. And now once we're there, we're going to take this about three times, but we want to see if we can keep our spine super straight. As though somebody has their foot here in your sacrum, you're going to inhale, lift up as tall as you can, and then exhale, hinge from your sacrum, come forward. And then you'll inhale and you'll come out and you'll exhale and you'll come forward. And this is like super tiny. You might go a millimeter. You might go a centimeter. You might go an inch. We're not going feet here, man. We're just taking little tiny movements just to see how that goes. And your right leg is active and your hands are pulling that strap like you're riding a horse through the mountains. And she'll be riding six five. Oh, never mind. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you're just good. And then the next time you come forward, you're going to stay there. And you're going to pause and you're going to breathe. And you're going to pull that strap back. And the heart comes forward. And the sacrum comes forward. And you're saying, hello, hamstring. Hello, calves. Hello, breath of mine. Or grimace of mine, whichever we've got going on. That's fine, too. And you're just pausing and you're breathing. And you're pausing and you're breathing. And seeing if you can soften any tension around your shoulders. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's fun. And then you'll gently inhale and you'll come up. You'll release your strap, release your leg. And then you'll take a moment to sit tall and you might circle the ankles. You might windshield wiper the legs. You might sit back like a kid waiting for ice cream. You do whatever the heck works for you, but you're just gonna find a little bit of movement there and see how it feels between the sides. And then when you're ready, we'll try the other side. So now our left leg is gonna cross a little bit more towards the right. You cross your right leg over the left thigh. Stack your right knee on top of your left. Yep, and then find your strap and lasso it around the ball of your left foot. And then when you're set, you're gonna sit as tall as you can and coming from your sacrum, you'll inhale, lift up and exhale, hinge forward a little bit. And you've got about five of these little palsy do's and you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're pausing and you're breathing. Yeah, and if you feel sleepy, that's completely normal. We've been doing a lot of hip flexion today, um, which there's brahmana and langana. Um, and so this is inducing that. So it's making you more calm and introspective, which makes you sleepy, or at least quiet. The next time you come forward, you'll go ahead and come forward and you'll stay there and you'll just breathe for a few. And you just breathe and the heart stays open. Yeah, and the shoulder blades slide away. Yep. And you just pause and you breathe and that left foot is active as you push me up into the strap. Okay. And then you'll gently start to inhale and come up. Release your strap. Release your right leg next to your left. And then you'll take a little bit of time to maybe roll the ankles, windshield wiper the hips, if that feels good to you, any of the above. Cool. I'll check them. I'll have the strap one more time. So this is an option for some of us if you want to use this. You are going to take your strap, and then you're going to take the tail end of your strap and wrap it under both loops and then go back over the first and under the second. Now I have a strap that I think is eight feet. 
Um, so it's pretty long. Not everybody has a strap that's that long. So if that's the case, no worries. From there, you're gonna wanna make sure that the strap that has the tail end is in one of your hands, the buckle is facing away from you, and you're gonna put the strap around your body. Okay, strap is gonna come across the backs of your hips. So like you're gonna feel it on your PSIS, so posterior superior iliac spine. Whoops, got it? Yeah, it bothers me too. That's why I do this whole thing where I'm like, okay. Um, cool. Once you've got that, you're going to bring your soles of your feet together and open your knees for Baddha Konasana. And then you've got the strap. You want to make sure that your loop is up so that you can tighten this when you lie down. Okay. And you guys are going to turn around so your faces aren't in the sun. And you'll make sure your blocks are somewhere nearby. You have a single block. Well, you, or not. There you go, now you got three blocks. Okay. And then you're gonna make your way onto your back. So the strap, you wanna make sure stays at the top of your hips. So your hip bones are there, you go. A little bit lower. And then you will lay down. And you can tighten that strap as much as you want. And your feet ideally stay on the floor unless you want your feet up in the air. <laughs> and the strap should come across the back of the hip. And you should find that it creates an arch in the low back. And then it goes across the front of your hip bone. And then you can pull that strap so it's as tight as you want in order to find support. Uh, Julie, can you come out of that? I'm not quite sure I understand what's going on there. Okay. So let's try one more time, Julie. Do you have your strap? Did you make a big loop with the strap? Oh, you did not. Oh, you have one of those. Yeah. Yes, I'm not very do. good at this, so we can just pass on that. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, I'll do the best I can. Okay, so you can also just use two blocks. The strap just uh, supports the thighs, so you don't have to have the block. And then afterwards, I need to buy one of those straps so I can figure out how to use those ones, because those are the fun ones. So I have a metal D loop, which is what I walked you guys through. Those ones, there's kind of really only one way to do what you're doing. Uh, Julie has the plastic loop, where if you do what you guys just did, it falls right out. Yeah. So you guys have got about four to five breaths here, and you just notice what you notice. How's the low back feeling? How's the breath feeling? Some of you will choose to stay here a bit longer. Some of you are going to start to come out of this shape. And to come out of this depends upon how it feels for you. Personally, I like to just draw my inner thighs towards each other and then that releases the tension on the strap. Some of you might want to try to release the tension on the strap. But when you're ready to come out of this, you will best come out of this. And so if you draw the inner thighs together, then you start to walk the feet out of the strap. There we go. And then from there, <clears throat> you'll come back to the very first position that we started in. So that constructive rest position. Feet outside of hips, knees knock in, arms cross the body. <clears throat> and as you're here now, you'll just take a few breaths and a few moments to notice what you notice. How's the body feeling now? How do the back of the shoulders feel, the backs of the hips? How's the breath in the pelvis, in the abdomen, in the low back? How is your general state of calm and ease? And then as you're checking in here, some of you may feel completely ready to go towards Shavasana. Some of you might be calling for some final shape or shape. And you just check in with your body. Only you know best. Some people that experience sciatica often find relief in doing what's called a figure four Sukhi Randrasana or a pigeon type shape. 
some people find relief in doing a gentle twist. And by gentle, I mean like your legs are, um, you're not crossing them, you're not creating any compression. You're just doing like a wide open knee twist type of thing. And you just pause. You know your body better than anybody else. The longest relationship. You see, you just pause and you breathe. I mean, it is true. Your whole entire life. <laughs> you have socks on the table. Yes, you do. And so you'll take these last few moments and breath cycles to do what feels most appropriate for you, what feels good to you. Um, I just recalled as I watched Erica doing a bridge that originally in the sequence I had had you guys do a few bridges on the uh, Urdva Dhanurasana, but we didn't do that today. So you might want to do a few bridges. That also helps if you've got, um, what's it called? The disc. Well, yes, but if your sciatica is caused by the herniated disc, the bridge pose again, it's a back bend, so it pushes the disc forward. Um, yes, it feels amazing on the front of the hips. I also like it, how it feels in terms of my heart space. It feels like it quiets my mind and just opens my chest. Okay, you've got about another minute or two doing whatever the heck you happen to be doing. And then when you feel complete, no rush, you do have time. When you feel complete, you will start making your way to your final resting pose. And that can be whatever the heck you want it to be for today, as long as it's symmetrical. Right side and the left side are doing the same thing. And per usual, the first thing that I encourage you to do is to get comfortable. So if you need to fidget around a little bit, by all means, fidget around. And then you'll take a few deep breaths. Big in-breath through the nose, an audible exhale through the mouth. One more time, big breath in. And big breath out. And then third time, switch one. Big breath in. And big breath out. If you settle into your shape, allow the body to just settle into the floor. And you just notice that there is the invitation that gravity always presents of a softening, of a taking care to soften. And you just allow yourself to continue to soften into the floor, into gravity. And you'll continue to be here with you for the next few moments, for the next few breaths.
return your awareness to your breath. As you come back to your breath, just take a moment to check in. If there's any part of you longing to linger in this shape, by all means, please stay here. When you are ready to move, allow movement to enter into your body with a sense of care, a sense of gentleness and ease. You might find that that movement gradually can become a wiggle or a yawn or a stretch. And those in stillness stay as long as you'd like. Those in movement, make your way to one of your sides and pause there for a few breaths. From there, you'll roll your chest more towards the floor, press into your top hand, and walk your spine up to sit. From there, take the opportunity to sit on a block or a blanket. Then with the gaze soft and the eyes closed, Find alignment through your spine. So if that means you need to remove flesh from underneath your sit bones, do that. And then observe what it feels like to really find rootedness, groundedness through your pelvis. And then a sense of lift through the vertebra so that the shoulders stack over the hips. The heart opens through the gates of the arms. Your ears or over your shoulder and your head is in a neutral position. And then notice what it feels like to relax the tongue, to relax the jaw, to relax the eyes and the forehead. And just take a few breath cycles here. Our practice is an invitation for us to tune into our bodies time and again. Our bodies are always there to support us time and again. And the more that we can allow ourselves to get quiet, to slow down, to tune in, we can receive the gift that our body is always trying to help us with or provide to us. So as you're here for these last few moments and last few breaths, I want you to take a scan of the body and say thank you to the parts that you notice. And then we'll go ahead and complete our practice with a collective breath, followed by a collective palm. Gather your hands to heart center. Press the palms into each other. Receive the weight of your thumbs into your breastbone and then press your sternum back into your thumb. Soften your chin towards your fingertips and exhale all the breath from your mouth. Take a big breath in through the nose. Audible breath out. Inhale for OM. Join if you'd like. Om. Draw your thumbs to your third eye. May our thoughts be clear. Draw your thumbs to your lips. May our words be kind. And draw your thumbs to your heart center. May our hearts be open. The light, the breath within me honors and salutes the light and the breath within each of you. Namaste.